All right, welcome back to the Scrofito Mask Project. Uh, this is part nine, which is planning the surface for uh, applying the black underglaze that will eventually go through and uh, design some Scrofito designs on the surface of it. So I feel like the mask is pretty much sculpturally wise. It's not going to be added on to anymore. I've done everything that I want to do on the surface, and now I need to start laying on some of the design work that is uh, already drawn in the drawing. But now I'm trying to transfer it onto my actual um, clay surface. So based off of what I've already done in the drawing, I'm kind of recreating some of the features uh, that are going to be become black and white design or black uh, underglaze with the Scrofito design on the surface. The first tracing that I did, I used that cup. It's the same size cup uh, rim as I did for the drawing. Uh, I didn't like it. So it was too high up on the forehead, so I readjusted and I sprayed the clay a little bit to rub off that line, and then I'm relining it up and using just the back edge of a paintbrush to create the circle, but you could also use a pencil. I just don't want to dig into the clay too much. I want to be very subtle, very light line, just barely uh, visible. And if I need to do any more work on that, uh, I can go ahead and uh, trace and put a little bit of a deeper line if I need to but I want to try to make sure the lines are as minimal as possible just enough to see because I'm going to eventually want to fill in some of those areas with the black uh, underglaze and that's going to require um, a light touch as well so I don't want to I don't want to put any big deep grooves into the clay right now and then I'm going to start thinking about how am I going to trace out or make those lines go across the entire face that are going down. It's a lot easier to draw a straight line on a flat piece of paper than it is on a three-dimensional sculpture. So you have to be careful with what you're using and sometimes you might need to find something that's going to have a little bit of a softer kind of curve to it uh, as opposed to that you know that wooden ruler or something like that. So something a little bit shorter to kind of get the line going. This uh, stencil is made out of some kind of softer plastic so you can actually bend it kind of get a couple of your marks figured out and then a lot of it is going to be free-handed I'm gonna to have to just use it and kind of sketch with the back of my paintbrush or use a pencil something that's going to allow you to basically start a, a minimal line a very light line all the way down the face to kind of resemble uh, the same thing that was happening on the drawing so I'm taking my time trying to make sure that I'm lining things up I want to make parallel lines with each other um, after I established one good line, I want to make another one that's maybe about an inch, maybe an inch and a half uh, away from that one and start drawing that onto the surface lightly. I don't want to leave a big groove into the clay because I want to make sure that the surface of the sculpture can, stays intact and stays the same uh, throughout the entire process. But you can see there's a light sketch right there that I'm going to use as a guide when I start painting in with the black underglaze. And now doing the same thing on the other side and trying to recreate what I have done on the drawing. And it's pretty symmetrical having them spaced out kind of the same way and just trying to make sure that it's just, just there enough that I can see it so I know where to start and stop with, with the black underglaze when I start painting that on the surface. So they look pretty parallel, they look pretty good, and then um, I'll get prepared to get started on uh, brushing on a couple layers of black underglaze for the final Scrofito technique. This does take a little bit of time, getting all those little uh, transitions between the cheeks and the mouth and the, the eyebrows and everything like that. So you can see there's some lines going vertically all the way through the mask without digging into the clay too deeply and ruining the overall surface of what I've done. So once I'm satisfied with what I've done, I can start thinking about applying the black underglaze. This is done all at the leather hard stage. So the clay has to still be leather hard when you want to actually apply the black underglaze. If you wait too long, it might not adhere properly. If you wait, or if you go about it too soon, um, it could it could potentially ruin some of your form by soaking into the clay too much and causing things to crack. 
So leather hard stage is the key part of being able to um, apply the black underglaze at the right time. All right, take a soft, small brush, and then there's the cup of black underglaze that you guys have uh, in your toolbox. And then you also need to have some clean, uh, a little bit of a cup of clean water so that you can rinse out your brush while you're working. Mix it up really well. Make sure uh, it's a little bit thinner than slip. It should be um, more of a consistency of cream or something like that instead of like a milkshake. If it's really thick, you might have to add some water and then blend it in before you start applying your layers of black underglaze. And I just kind of work quickly around the edges in certain sections. And I'll try to work all the way from one, one side all the way to the other side and try to keep my hands away from any of the areas that might still be wet. So I'm left-handed, so I always work on the right side of the section first and then work my way towards the left. Uh, I would suggest if you're right-handed, do the opposite. Work on the left side and work your way towards your right so that you don't drag your hand across uh, the areas that you've already laid a layer down onto. There is a way to um, fix things if you accidentally mess up, like I touched the horn on accident with my brush. And so the one thing that you don't want to do is try to rush over and try to clean it up with a damp sponge. Let that sit, let it rest, let it firm up a little bit. Uh, and once you're done with your first layer or your second layer, you can come back and we'll be able to scrape it away with one of the tools that you have uh, in your toolbox. But don't try to wipe it away uh, right after you've done something that you don't like. You can always come back to it and lightly scrape it away without ruining any surface area or ruining your design. So I'm gonna have to rotate as I do it. Depending on what I'm trying to do, I might have to change my angle, I might have to go from the side a little bit, I might have to go from above, I might have to go from below. It just depends on where you need the slip or the black underglaze to adhere to the clay. You just need to figure out exactly what is your best angle. Uh, but I do like to work always from the right side and work towards my left, no matter what uh, direction the mask might be uh, situated at. So you're gonna have to lift it up. You're gonna have to move it around a little bit. You might have to rotate it in your hand, but make sure that you keep your hands off of the black underglaze at all times. You don't wanna smear it and uh, leave finger marks somewhere else where you didn't realize you had it on your thumb or on your other fingers, and then putting your fingers all over the other parts of your mask. I'm using a small brush because there's lots of little detail areas that I need to get into. Uh, if you feel comfortable, there's bigger brushes that you could possibly use uh, to fill in space a little bit quicker, but I'm only doing some accent work and I'm not covering the whole thing with black. So I know I can kind of move it around quickly enough with my smaller brush without having to um, worry about it drying out too fast or um, having any kind of issues with buildup or stuff like that. So once I get that one layer on, the first layer is kind of finished almost, I can go back and work on the second layer after I let it dry for a second or two, maybe, maybe a little longer than that. But if I need to do some cleanup, I can do cleanup at this stage or I can wait until I'm completely done so that I don't accidentally make any more mistakes and have to clean them up later as well. Um, but don't touch the glaze or don't touch the underglaze until you see it starting to dry out and you have to wait for it to dry out to the leather hard stage before you want to do any kind of carving into the surface. So make sure that um, it's that leather hard stage again before you start working on um, working on the sgraffito technique. So this, this demonstration is basically just the first layer, but I'm gonna take care of that horn and get rid of some of that with one of the scraping tools. It's very simple, just kind of go across the surface with the tool, don't use the point of it, use the side edge of it, and just scrape it away lightly and get rid of that first layer of black that was attached to the surface. And it's like it's never been there, it disappears. All right, once you've finished doing your two layers, You've only seen one so far. I'm not going to show another one in this video, but once you've done your two layers, minimal amount, that's the minimum amount, rinse out your brushes, make sure there's nothing built up in there, make sure you shut your lid, 
and then you're good to go for this graffito. All right, good luck.